here. I was in charge of, I had to take care of all of the pawn shops. The officers would go out and collect these, this list of some people who had pawned uh, uh, items, yeah. and they would bring them to me, and I had to yell that into the computer. And if a red flag would come up, <laughs> that item had been reported as stolen. Uh, After I was finished, I did that daily. I would go to the pawn shop, pick up the tickets, bring them back to South District, and um, enter them. Mm -hmm. And I did that for that number of years. I really did. They gave me a truck, mm -hmm. a little pickup truck, to keep from using my car. I could use that only to go pick up pawn tickets and anything that I'd have to take that down to the big office. It was a South District office out in 301. That's right here. Right. 301, right, right there now. Right. That's what I worked out of. Mm -hmm. You said you retired there in 2010? I retired, I retired there in 2010. Mm -hmm. And I started back working for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 2013. Oh, yeah. So retirement is kind of slow in coming. Well, see, but see, now I'm doing strictly volunteer work. Oh, I see. I go up and I take care of subpoenas. Mm -hmm. If someone has a subpoena, I call them on the phone mm -hmm. and let, remind them of their court date, mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. and the courtroom in which they to be in. Mm -hmm. When they answer, I mean, they, if I talk with them, I record it on the sheet mm -hmm. and I put that form in the box so the officers will know, or the court system will know, that they will be in court that day. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now. I work after I leave here. I go there. Was this with the sheriff's department? No, this is the police department. This is police, okay. I'm working in there. Can I ask you? Um, you said that uh, back in the day, uh -huh. the neighborhood felt so safe, yeah. even though you didn't have police protection. You didn't even lock. Have to feel well, yeah. like you had to lock your doors. But I and there was there, um, there was all these thriving mm -hmm. businesses. So it was a strong oh, yes. community. Oh yes. But then along came integration, and it sounds like something didn't work. Well, with integration. Like we were still doing that time. And you must remember, I was little. Okay. I was growing up. Yeah. And uh, but during that time of integration, we still had those black businesses downtown. And they eventually just folded. It. Right. They folded. It. You know, we had, uh, this interesting, not the 500 block of East Nash Street. You would have been surprised back in the year. Yeah. Uh, what happened there? That was a thriving community of black businesses. Right. We had our barbershops. <laughs> we had theaters. We had the docks. We had villa parlors. We had our little soda places. And years ago, there was a, a black ice cream place mm -hmm. there, right, sitting right across the street from the Jackson Chapel Baptist Church. Wow. Okay. We had grocery stores, thriving ones. Yeah. And then as years passed, they started moving because the downtown of the courthouse, they started opening up now. And these businesses seem to have given up. Mm -hmm. They gave up. We had a colonial store right there on East Nash Street. Right. Thriving businesses. Really vibrant. And so was it the same owners were opening up on West Nash Street? The same or? owners were so forced to close. Or forced to close. Yeah, forced to close. Just about the business just dropped off tremendously. And people just kind of had to go out. Uh, so that was kind of a... It's kind of a downside to the way integration yeah, was it done. Was good, yeah, right here it was. How do you think that affected this community after all these businesses started to leave? Well, to be honest with you, it had a great impact mm -hmm. on the black community. And you will find today that is basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's basically the same thing. I've been here this number of years, and I never thought that I would see things that are happening in Wilton today that happened years ago. I'm reliving what I lived years ago. Really? I really am. 
However, I'm taking it in stride and I, I'm a strong believer in letting you know how I feel. I mean, not to but if I come into have an incident, then I have to explain myself. I really do. Uh, I can't be, I'm not going to be pushed around, neither am I going to be violent. I believe in talking. And we can come to, a, in talking, we can come to a mutual understanding. That's my belief. Yeah. And I live that kind of life. Uh, I respect people. However, I don't like some of the things that, that's uh, happening. It, it bothers me yeah. to see those things happening to some people here. And I am willing, or I go to them, and I talk, to try to get them to do what we need to take care of this. Not violently, but there's a way that you can talk to people. Uh -huh. And that's what I do. What kind of things are you seeing happen again? That <clears throat> Okay, let's go back. Yeah. During the early years, Blacks didn't have an opportunity to work on, let's say, decent jobs. Wilson was a thriving tobacco market. When Wilson was known, we had a radio station here, WGTM. That was the first radio station here in Wilson. Yeah. And uh, those initials, Wilson, the greatest tobacco market. <laughs> we thrived on tobacco. We had the factories where the tobacco was processed. You had uh, uh, the field work. Mm -hmm. People, the, we had to do field, we had to crop that tobacco. Mm -hmm. We had to prepare it to go <laughs> to the factories. The tobacco factories here had uh, a lot of people, black people. So we didn't have regular jobs. We had a seasonal job. Those tobacco markets, those tobacco factories sold for a while. But then they were closed. Once they closed, you were in the street because they didn't have uh, unemployment. So we would have to go to work. I worked in the tobacco factory too. Did you? Oh yes. We would go to work. <clears throat> we would be paid. But then we had to look out for the winter months right. because there was no employment. Yeah. Now what happened there, businesses wanted to come to Wilson to open and they were not able to do so because the great tobacco leaders forced it down due to the fact, now if you bring that business in here, they have to think. If you bring that business in here, we're going to lose our seasonal workers because they're going to leave and they're going to go together. So therefore, we were suppressed. Right. We had to do it. Right, I see. From that, not only was it tobacco, we did a lot of work in private homes as the cooks, butlers, housekeepers, nurses, Little of no income. But I saw that. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Mm -hmm. And they had a bus, buses on during that time. Mm -hmm. That was the first buses that we had coming down. And that was solely to pick up all these workers going downtown across the track in these exclusive neighborhoods. Right. To keep children. Or to cook. Or to clean. That's, that's really what happened. We were suppressed. Right. And right. we had, um, back in that, those days, we couldn't hire. They didn't hire teachers from the Wilson area much. They would go out of Wilson and bring the teachers, even to teach in the black schools, because I never had a, a teacher that was born in really in Wilson. I had people coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know what it was about. Was that because they wanted to keep them working in tobacco? I just don't know what happened there. But they went back. Now, I have a sister that went to work here in 19... 
forty five. Yeah. She worked one year and she said, This is not for me. She left Wilkin and she went to Bennett College in Greensboro, and that's where she finished. Uh -huh. And she did her tenure there, then she moved to California. But mm -hmm. however, getting back to Wilson per se, we have not managed to really get anywhere. We don't get anywhere. Right. I've seen it, and I'm seeing it now. Yeah. Uh, it was pathetic for you. You couldn't have, you wouldn't have believed it. You would not have believed it. Mm -hmm. There were certain stores that you would go downtown and you were snarled. They didn't want the ladies to try on the dresses. Mm -hmm. They didn't want them to put on the hats. If they put on a hat, then they would cover their heads in a bonnet. Really? And they would let them try on a hat. But then they would throw that bonnet away once you got out of the store. Wow. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we treated that way. Yeah. We really were. Uh, and, yet, and yet they trusted their children oh, yes. to these same women. Oh, yes. Isn't that ironic? And we got to the place that was a Wilson Theater downtown right now, where the Arts Council is right now. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And if you, if I would tell you, I'd like to take your son to the theater this afternoon, some, some movies I would like to take. Mm -hmm. They were allowing me to go mm -hmm. because I had that child. But then the movie theater got small. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take that child in there. Hmm. They put that rule hmm. because they didn't allow me in there. Yeah. So the parent would have to take her. Hmm. But there's so much history here in Wilson. Yeah. It's so much that people don't know. They just don't know it. Yeah. And I was born in it all. If there are any specific questions you want to ask, I'll be glad to answer. Regardless of what they are, I will answer because it needs to be told. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, it does. And I can tell them. Yeah. I really can. And hold back nothing. I know you mentioned you, you, were, you were, you know, talking about the older days. Yeah. Uh, basically, you know, we're being suppressed <clears throat> and stuff like that. You know, what's going on now here? Right now, now jobs have opened up mm -hmm. and people are doing their, their conditions, living conditions have gotten better. But in this time right now, everything is on the turmoil. Everything. But boy jobs have opened up, and yet we need some. We need them. Mm -hmm. uh, people have the housing. Mm -hmm. I've got to bring this up. When I was growing up, there were many, many shotgun houses. Do you know what they are? Yeah. Do you know what shotgun? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This area right here that you're sitting on right now, nothing but shotgun houses to this street from here all the way down. Hmm. I've got to go back on this. <laughs> Years ago, in this area, you had no paved streets. We were blessed. We lived on one. We lived on the only five streets in this area that you had paved with the Nash Street from downtown to right here. From here or back, it was dirt. Hmm. You had Nash Street paved, you had Pender Street paved at a certain point, Green Street was paved on which I lived. From the railroad to Vic Street, that we had to walk in the street and in dirt streets from Pender from Vic Street to Dog to School. Hmm. To school. At this time that was the edge of town, wasn't it? Because 301 didn't exist. Back Three, yeah, 301 right. did. It did at that 301. Point. First coming through Wilson, it would come in north. Everything had to go out there where the Operation Center is. Mm -hmm. There was a two-lane road called north on the right, south on the left. They would come into that point. You would turn that to the right. That street would lead you all the way down across the track around Goldsboro Street. Mm -hmm. It passed right by the courthouse, on the side of the courthouse, mm -hmm. all the way out beyond five points. Right. <clears throat> That's where it connected again. Mm -hmm. The next move from there 
was Pender Street. Mm -hmm. They would come in out here by the old Holiday Inn, mm -hmm. from right around, and you would curve. Don't come back up to the curve and come down Pender Street from Pender Street to here and there. Mm -hmm. And eventually, they put it here. Mm -hmm. right. That's where it came. Now you mentioned earlier you, you, know, you were talking about uh, with the suppression you know, by a lot of it may have to do with you know just a uh, to bowers of tobacco around here keeping things from happening. Yeah. You know, if you start back in the nineties, I guess the tobacco started to go down. Did, uh, did that? Did you see a change then? And oh, what yes. businesses were coming here to Wilson once tobacco it, was disappearing? It changed not for the better. It was certain to be a change for the worse mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you could hide them, yeah. firestone. First of all, it changed mm -hmm. It did. Mm -hmm. And local companies like Merck out here, mm -hmm. not a big change. And uh, industries like that, they brought change here. And I've seen that. How did that come about? How, what, um, how did the power of the big the tobacco business to get broken? <laughs> They, uh, it was felt, generally felt, that if you let Firestone come in here, it's going to help the economy here. Uh -huh. However, I don't think that the persons who thought about that thought, didn't think they would have an impact on the one. Mm -hmm. It did. It had a lot of black. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they were glad to have it here. Burn. The same way. Yeah. So we gradually had things come in. <laughs> I'm sorry to point. Uh -uh. But do you know yeah. that have you looked at the area beyond Raleigh Road? Go out of the airport boulevard. Right. Yeah. What yeah. is happening? Mm -hmm. yeah. Look at it. Look at it. Everything is moving. Oh yeah. We know that. Mm -hmm. Right here. This used to be the city limits. Mm -hmm. The city limits moved to 301. And I was out beyond a model I would be out of that way. Mm -hmm. But this was the end. Now, if we aren't careful, I see this in the making. Mm -hmm. 301 is going to eventually stop where Firestone is. It's going to make that curve. Mm -hmm. And they've already widened Airport Boulevard to get ready for it. Mm -hmm. It's by the way. Mm -hmm. But yet they say that isn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. I know it is. Yeah. And I posed that question to city council. You did. And they ignored me completely. They told me thanks. <laughs> and I sat down. <clears throat> it's something that they're trying to keep away, <clears throat> but they can't do it. And it burns me up. Yeah. to see how things are going right. and all the promises that are made mm -hmm. and not fulfilled. Mm -hmm. That's happening. That's going to have a big impact it's on this It's going to have a big impact community. on me if it ain't about nobody else. Yeah. And they just won't allow me to talk as much as I want to talk. Because I get angry. Mm -hmm. I do. Because it's been a struggle. And the only way that we survived is because my father worked downtown in that puppet shop. Uh, he did. He did. Right. Work people's hair. He cut their hair. Yeah. During the Second World War, he didn't want for anything. Because they saw to it that Mike Taylor got what he wanted. Hmm. Meat was rationed. Mm -hmm. I'd just go on and on about that stuff. Yeah. Food was rationed, yeah. but we were never hungry hmm. because there was a milk, uh, meat market downtown called Wilson Meat Market, right around the corner from the uh, barber shop. Uh -huh. right. It was rationed. You couldn't get good cuts of meat. We did because we worked downtown. Hmm. But Wilson has a long way to go, yeah. and I want to live to see that. <laughs> I know that I'm not going to live that long. You know, but not be what I am now. But it needs to be known. We have suffered. Yeah. And we will continue to suffer. And <clears throat> there was something else on my mind that 
I, I really want to say it's kind of left her right now, but it's coming back before I leave here, and it might be out of context right here. That's but fine. It's coming back. That's okay. <laughs> because I'm not sure about this. Every bit of it. Yeah. Well, I think I see what you're talking about. The cycles uh, are coming around again. Coming around. Because you were talking about when there was the roads weren't paved. No. And you didn't no. have police protection. Not as much. Now the town's moving. It's moving. And so it's government moving. services are following it. And That's true. here we are with a high we're unemployment and with street problems. We're going to Nashville. No, no, don't I mean, you're going to that way. We're going to Raleigh this way. Right. You're going to soon find that Rock, that Rosen is going to take you to the homeless place. They're moving that way. Yeah. They're not spreading this way. Mm -hmm. right. They're moving this way. Right. Yeah. 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 Sometimes when you have progress, it kind of hurts the people, leaves other people behind. It does. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I said I was born here, reared here. Mm -hmm. Another incident that happened in Wilson. Yeah. Now, you know, schools were segregated. Mm -hmm. This is going to be an issue report. We had a graded school. Yeah. Everybody from grades one to three had to go to that school. That school was located at that time on Stantonsbury Street. That's what it was called. Mm -hmm. Well, Stantonsbury Street ran into just about East Ash down there. Mm -hmm. That graded school was a big two-story building with the front porch. Uh, the, there were so many students going there, they had to put individual houses, classrooms on the outside of the building. So if you taught third grade, your room would be outside on campus with a stove. You'd put wood and coal in to say that the teacher would have to get, I get students to keep this thing going mm -hmm. because there were no radiators. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's a wood stove. Huh, wood stove yeah. in those little outside places. Right. <laughs> we did have heat in that big building. There were no bathrooms inside the building. Mm -hmm. You would have to go outside and have a big uh, brick building out there. Yeah. And regardless of the weather, if you had to go to the bathroom, you had to go out in the rain to this building that sat about as far as the street out there. Mm -hmm. Boys and girls. I don't know where the teachers went. I never found that out. <laughs> <laughs> but they had to go. Yeah. That's what now, interestingly, we have an incident that happened here in Wilson. The schools were not equal. You know that. Yes. Now we've been getting okay. let me tell you before I get to the other one. Okay. We have a black teacher to go downtown because she wanted to do that pencil shop. Your parents would have to sharpen your pencils at home with a knife mm -hmm. because we couldn't get them sharpened. We didn't have them. Right. This teacher went downtown to talk to a superintendent about it. You may have heard this. I don't know. Okay. You heard it? No. This uh, Charles Coon? Man, he went down there and all, <laughs> did the honor, but the superintendent slapped him. Mm -hmm. He slapped him. Do you know what happened after that? No. Okay. So, so this started with her, her wanting a pencil sharp. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and go ahead. He wouldn't give it to her. And they had a little argument, mm -hmm. and he slapped her. Uh -huh. That's what drew the, that drew the line. Yeah. The blacks. Professional black people, yeah. business owners, got together. Had you heard this? I've heard some of the stories. That's <laughs> where all blacks were pulled out of that school mm -hmm. and the independent school was formed. 
they hired their teachers. And all the black students went to this independent school yeah. until the thing was settled. How long was that? The independent school, oh, that was back right after I was born. That was back in the late 20s. Oh, okay. How long did that independent school last? <clears throat> Not too long after that. Because? Because the school system decided that they would open up and give, give what we needed. Uh -huh. But they had their own teachers, their own principals. Sam picked all the business leaders here, so we can't have it. Yeah. And they did that. Mm -hmm. And it worked out very well. Mm -hmm. But then eventually went back to these schools. And when we were down there, the school couldn't accommodate all of us. So if you lived right across the street here, and I lived over here, mm -hmm. You would go to at that time to Vic School. They built a school over there on Ray Street near the Ray Street Community right. Summit, which OIC is housed in now. Mm -hmm. You would go to Vic to the school, Vic. And my living here, I would go to the graded school. Mm -hmm. Now you would go to school but from <clears throat> eight o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. to twelve noon. Hmm. Because we had to leave so that you could go. You would split shift. Huh. You would go from 12 mm -hmm. to 4 mm -hmm. because the first shift had come on out. You didn't go full day. So you, you were sharing <laughs> the building but not at the same time? No, yes, you had the building but not at the same time. Huh. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I've never I heard, never heard that. Uh, we should, I had to walk from Great Street to the greatest school over here on Stanton First Street. Now I call it a school yard. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I had to work there. I'd go to school there, but I'd leave home at 12 o'clock at <laughs> And I'd get home at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. No buses. Mm -hmm. You first year old grade, first grade student, walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what happened. Then when the bill, when the fifth school of was built, I went over there. Yeah. Through the end. Yeah. But if you, you go and when you got in some parts of high school, I'd look in the book and see your name. We got all second-hand books. Oh, yeah. yeah. We got all of them. <laughs> that was it. I could go all day this way. Yeah, it's <laughs> fascinating. I'm really not bitter. Yeah. And why, why is that? How have you kept from getting bitter? Because I think I would have been. Well, to a certain degree, but I wasn't bitter. I just kept thinking it's going to change. Mm -hmm. I'm living for a change. Yeah. I'm living for that. And I haven't seen it yet. And I'm not going to give up. However, I'm not going to outlive it either. Right. When you get my age, there's not much promise. I'm just living on part time. Yeah. I know that. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm well. I feel good. Okay. And I can really tell you this. I love people regardless. I can see that. I love them. I truly love people. I love to talk. I just enjoy and people all the folk right here today. I'm known throughout town because I don't care where you live or no. who you are. Yeah. I can talk. Yeah. I don't have to associate with you, <laughs> right. but I can talk to you mm -hmm. with no animosity. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the Lord has blessed me with that kind of girl because I love it. And now I'll tell you the true story about the courtroom. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you the true story about that one. I was going up there to that courtroom and I was sitting from 9.30 in the morning to 12.30, mm -hmm. and sometimes 1 o'clock. And my job was simply, I do it let let the officers know that they have a case. Oh. <clears throat> I did that for about five days and I went back to the headquarters. I said, you know, I don't <clears throat> like what I'm doing. And they wonder, so well, Mr. Dill, are you doing? They call Mr. Rods, are you doing? <laughs> they said, what is it you don't like? I said, all of you know me. I've worked here before. I worked for 10 years here. I said, so you know me. 